Hello, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the April Community Webcast. Um, for those of you who are new to this webcast series, my name is Caitlin Lamb, Product Marketing for Agile Central. Um, so hackathons have been an integral part of the rally culture, and Kyle Morris and Marianne Graham are here with us today to talk about how this culture of hackathons still lives on in Agile Central. And they're also going to talk about why we have hackathons and how it helps create space for innovation in new projects. Um, we, will be, we will be taking Q&A. Um, we'll be saving Q&A until the very end. Um, but if you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to use the Q&A feature to the right of your screen. Um, and this session will be recorded for um, any of your colleagues who maybe weren't able to join us live. Um, but with that said, I will pass it over to Marianne and Kyle. Great. Thank you, Caitlin. Quick introduction. Uh, my name is Mary Ann Graham. I'm a product owner here at Agile Central. I focus a lot on customer feedback and how we can improve our current products, but I also love hackathons. And when I'm not working, I also enjoy hiking and volleyball. And I'm Kyle Morse. I'm an architect here at Agile Central. Um, I also love hackathons a ton. Um, I don't get to hack quite as much as I used to, but I'm much more involved on the, the, facil the facilitation end of things these days, um, which is also super rewarding. All right, so uh, just a high-level agenda of what we're going to go over uh, in today's presentation. Um, we'll spend a little bit of time first just making sure everyone's up to speed on what a hackathon actually is, um, and then we'll kind of go um, through a timeline of what um, what it takes to um, get ready for a hackathon, um, the hack week itself, um, what comes afterwards. Um, we're going to do, uh, we'll talk a little bit about how we actually turn hackathon projects into shippable work for customers. Um, finally, we want to talk about some of the challenges that we've run into with this process over the years and some of the ways that we've um, come up with new and new different ways to do, to do things that fit better with our process. And then finally, we'll wrap up and leave time for a few questions at the end. All right, so innovation, what is that? It's making new stuff, right? Let's, let's build something new and different and creative. Um, that sounds awesome, but how do you actually make sure that you have time and space to do that in your organization with all of the other ongoing daily things that you have to do? So there are a handful of things that we've identified as being important to, um, to uh, innovation being successful in your organization. Um, number one, is obviously a dedicated time and space to be able to do this. It's super important to have some time carved out where um, it can be your sole focus and um, your regular day-to-day -day work is not intruding on, um, on that time. Um, and again, the, the sole focus of that time is to learn and explore and create and try stuff. Right? It, that time needs to be safe to fail. Um, you know, Obviously, everyone is looking for the next unicorn. Uh, it's super fun when you build something that is you know, knock it out of the park awesome, but that absolutely cannot be the bar for success. Like, you just have to get out of the way and let people try try stuff, right? Um, and then finally, um, everyone needs to be bought in. And, you know, that includes the highest levels of your organization. Um, you need that support um, and that understanding of how important innovation is to the future of your business to, to really get um, some value out of this. Uh, so here at Rally, uh, and, and now uh, more recently CA and Agile Central, um, we've always used hackathons as a way to, to create space for, um, for that innovation. So what's a hackathon? Um, I think this is a fairly well-known term, but just in case, um, it's a usually competitive event in which people work together in teams on software and hardware projects with the goal of creating a demoable product by the end of the event. Um, it looks something like what Jim Carrey is doing here. That's pretty much just a week of that. <laughs> um, so when do we actually fit this in? Um, so our, our current process is we take a week every quarter. Um, Cadence-wise, we do it right at the end of each of our, um, our, of our PI increments, um, the week right before our, our PI planning, our big room planning event. Um, this is consistent with what SAFE uh, recommends in the innovation space as well. So, um, and there's a, there's a link here in the presentation if anyone would like to do some further reading on, on that as well. But, um, basically, the idea is you know leave some time toward the end of each one of your PIs for innovation and planning. Um, you know, who, who hackathon? Who's doing this? Right. Um, the, the obvious answer is engineers, but it totally should not be limited to just technical folks. 
Um, you know, here we, we definitely encourage forming cross-functional teams and include product owners, you know, dev managers. Let's get user learning in there. Um, one of the fun success stories of the user learning team specifically is um, the, our Prague office had a hackathon event um, a few months ago, and the user learning team actually won the, the entire thing. You know, their project stood up against everyone else's, you know, crazy writing code and whatever. The user learning team won the whole thing, so um, that, that was super great. Um, Scrum Masters, right? That, you know, you can pretty much anyone can figure out a way to apply hackathon mentality to to what they do. Um, you know, hack your process, hack your culture. The the screen grab that we have on this slide here is um, from one of my favorite culture focused hackathons that we had, uh, where uh, a PO and a Scrum Master teamed up and made a really fun um, collaboration space in our in our new office uh, called Scotch Corner. <laughs> um, but anyway, you know, just you know, do what you do, what you can do to you know to increase collaboration and, and make it a fun place to work. Um, you know, Hackathon probably has to have some sort of rule set. Uh, we try and keep it pretty minimal uh, to just get out of the way and, and let people create. So these are the rules that we follow every time. The first one is follow your passion. Uh, that's pretty open ended. Um, you know, we we want to leave space for people to dig into whatever whatever makes them tick. Um, and then secondly, um, you have to demo what you did. Right, that's that's the fun part. That's where you get to show off what you learned, what you built. Um, you plant your idea in a bunch of other people's heads and get to really show off what you did. Um, and then finally, so here's kind of a high-level timeline of what of what these events usually look like here. Um, this also kind of mirrors what the rest of the presentation is going to look like. Um, so we'll kind of go through from you know about three three weeks out, two weeks out, a week out, the actual hack event itself, and then what comes afterwards. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, here's Marianne to take it away. All right, so three weeks till hackathon. One of the things we'll want to do at this point in time is recruit a committee. This can be anybody that's passionate about hackathons, so not just engineering, but anybody across the organization. It's great to have a committee because these people can help with planning, prep work, they can also help with ordering swag, and they can also help with figuring out trophies, which is one of the, the swag and the trophies are some of the most loved parts of Hackathon. It also gives us a chance to go through the feedback from previous Hackathons and find ways that we can improve our process. Another thing we do at three weeks out is pick a theme. A lot of times this will tie into our PI planning or big room planning theme. So we have a theme for every planning event that we do. And sometimes we'll use the exact same theme, which has been the case for the last quite a few hackathons, I think. This also can give the demos a theme and help inspire some creative projects. For example, last winter we had a Yeti-themed hackathon, and it, so there were some great ideas that came out of that. Um, you can see down in the bottom right here, our most recent hackathon was 80s-themed, so that is our 80s-themed uh, spring hackathon sticker for the year, which is super cool. Things to consider when picking a theme, you want to make sure you pick something that people get excited about, and we also like to pick things that make for good swag. For example, we had a Big Lebowski hackathon a few quarters ago which made for some awesome sunglasses for swag. Some of the ideas we've re recently used, as I said, we had an 80s themed one. Our last one was Winter Olympics. Uh, Big Lebowski was last fall. And American Gladiator was last summer. And every time we have a hackathon, we also create a logo for it, which is great for t-shirts and mugs and stickers and all sorts of other things. So top left here is our Oscars hackathon from last year. Bottom right is the Big Lebowski one that we talked about, which was last fall. Top left, that was the Yeti themed hackathon we talked about for winter of last year. The bottom middle one is our American Gladiator hackathon. And then top right, you can see we reused the Yeti, which has now become one of our favorite symbols within the company uh, for our Winter Olympics themed hackathon. Another thing that needs to be done about three weeks out is finding ideas, making sure people have something to work on so they can start thinking of how they're going to implement it, what they need to do it, what they need to come up with ahead of time. There's a variety of ways that we come up with hackathon ideas. One is passion projects. For example, we had one of our developers who is passionate about machine learning. So in his latest hackathon, he actually created a uh, machine learning algorithm that would generate Trump tweets based on current Trump tweets. It actually got pretty good at doing it. So that's just something fun that somebody decided to do. Another uh, thing people will use is uh, a desire to learn something new. So uh, for example, if somebody, we had a developer that wanted to learn about a new charting library. So he basically rewrote some of our charts in this new charting library called D3, which was super cool. 
A lot of times we'll get ideas from either customer requests or idea manager. This is a great way to figure out how to improve the current project, product, which is what a lot of people are familiar with, and come up with things that could be shippable in the future. And a lot of times people will just pick something that's fun. So the example here, this picture is one of our dev managers who uh, did a cover of the CA theme song as his hackathon one time. So he made a whole video to go along with it and it was actually really awesome. So there's a lot of places it can come from. Internally, we use something called Idea Manager, which allows our customers to submit enhancement requests to the product, and then other users can vote on them and also comment on them to provide more insight into the use cases. Uh, and this is actually super helpful for us because then we can understand what customers are most requesting and also gives us great ideas for Hackathon. The top right uh, idea here, the user story templates, actually it's something that got worked on in the uh, fall Hackathon of last year and now is in, currently in closed beta if anybody's interested. So super awesome, great way to get ideas, great way to get collaboration with our customers. Okay, so now two weeks out. Uh, a good thing to do this week is to schedule your kickoff event. Um, and the kickoff event is a great way to talk about um, the theme and the ideas. Um, and uh, announcing the kickoff um, is, a, is a nice marker to get everyone excited about the upcoming hackathon. Gives everyone a chance to start thinking about you know, what they want to work on. Um, are they looking to form a team around an idea? Are they looking to join someone else's team around an idea? Um, th those are all really great things to be doing this week. Um, another, the most important thing, you have to have the cool swag. Um, so uh, we've done a bunch of different stuff over the years. Um, you know, T-shirts, obviously, pine glasses, flat bracelets, um, which is actually uh, that's the thing that we got for our most recent 80s themed hackathon. Um, sunglasses, like from the Big Lebowski one. Um, we pretty much always do stickers, um, as Marianne said earlier. Um, they're they're fun, right? Everyone's got them on their laptop. It's kind of a little hackathon badge of honor. Um, you can tell how long everyone's been around by how many stickers they have, that sort of thing. Um, and the other thing that we found, too, is um, tying swag to um, actually participating in creating a demo increased our participation and our engagement in the organization, which was surprising. Um, because I thought Hackathon was going to stand on its own as being an awesome thing, but you dangle a t-shirt out there and you'd be surprised how many people are, are raring to go. Um, this uh, logistics a little bit. Um, we pretty much always use Sticker Mule for stickers. They've been a really awesome vendor to work with. Um, and, you know, they're, they're always super fast and responsive. And then for everything else, you know, we kind of just take it as it comes. You know, if you're looking for shirts or you know, glasses, we just kind of search around and find a vendor that works. Um, you know, every company is different too. You know, CA definitely has preferred vendors for certain things. And so um, you just kind of um, figure out what, what where is a good place to get all that stuff. Uh, here's an example of. Um, some of the stuff we've done. So this is, these are the slab bracelets that I was just talking about. Um, they go on the dark, which is the best part. Um, and, and some more stuff. Here's the t-shirt from the, um, the, winter, the Winter Olympics hackathon that we had. Um, and again, um, a hackathon pint glass and the dude glasses from the Big Lebowski hackathon. Uh, and again, this is actually my laptop. I'll, I'll give them a handful of these. All right, so now we're at one week till Hackathon. This is when we hold our kickoff. Uh, we always have ours in our game room, which is, just happens to be where we also have our kegs in the office. So we encourage everybody to grab a beer and share the ideas. The whole goal of this is to encourage collaboration. Uh, if people decide they want to team up, that's great. If you want to work on your own, that's also great. It doesn't hurt even if you decide to work on your own to share your ideas and get some feedback on maybe things to consider or better ways to improve it, or perhaps you are familiar with how to make a demo video, you can find somebody who can help with that. Um, it's a great way to team up. So here is some people in our, are some people in our uh, game room drinking beer, collaborating. This is pretty much what it looks like. It's a pretty casual thing that we do, just kind of a way to get people excited and talking. When it comes to forming teams, uh, Again, if people decide that they are interested in doing this, we do find that this can speed up shipping things. So if you pull in people like from UX and product, for example, it can help. Uh, Cross-functional teams are always super fun to reach out to somebody you're not used to working with, maybe either on a different uh, development team or maybe somebody in UL or UX. Just gives you a chance to work with somebody different. And maybe there's other people out there that are interested in the same thing as you, whether that's something technical or something super fun like Scotch Corner. All right, now finally the exciting part, Hack Week is finally here. 
So what does this look like? Um, we try very, very hard to just get out of the way and leave room for people to hack. Um, so we minimize as many interruptions as we can. Um, that means canceling any of our regularly scheduled meetings, including you know, team ceremonies, any of those sorts of things. Um, obviously, we make exceptions for if there are any sort of critical um, customer events, you know, outages or critical defects and those sorts of things. But uh, in general, we, we try very, very hard to um, preserve that space for everyone to innovate. Um, so then by the end of the week, um, it's time to address rule number two, make your demo. Um, so the way that we do this now, um, we ask everyone to pre-record a demo of, of their project. We try and keep them to two or three minutes or so, um, just, for, um, just logistically for when we actually demo later. Um, if everyone has an eight-minute demo, that's going to be a really long meeting. Um, and then uh, we upload all the videos to a shared spreadsheet and um, share all of those links out. Uh, one note on um, uh, doing live demos versus uh, the recorded ones. We actually used to do only live demos way back in the day, um, and for a number of reasons, um, you know, as we started scaling the organization, um, you know, time constraints, and also trying to coordinate with remote offices and, and that sort of thing, we just found over time that it made a lot more sense and it worked better for us to record our videos ahead of time. Oh, and the Marianne just reminded me that the screenshot that's on here is actually from um, a demo, uh, a demo from one of our recent hackathons. Um, uh, that involved hacking our elevators in the building. <laughs> right. Um, and so now um, we're actually going to play uh, an example demo for you. This is one of the projects that um, was voted a winner um, in our 80s hackathon that we just wrapped up a couple weeks ago. Um, one note, uh, depending how you're connected to this, you may want to mute the audio on the device that you're um, connected to WebEx so that you don't get double audio both through your computer and through the phone. Um, but with that, here we go. I think work is hard. Actually, Jen, you're not the only one. The Falcon 9 report from 98% of surveys listed estimating work accurately as the number one biggest challenge by 49% for team performance. This was also the most prevalent challenge reported across various studies and user interviews, not just from what we've seen, but it's a global epidemic. Wow, that's wild. Although it also sounds like a huge market opportunity. Whoa, look at that thing to the TV. <laughs> sizing game, find Yeti Betty in the QDP next to the plan estimate field. Click on Yeti to open up the game. She'll ask you a series of questions about the work item you want to estimate based on several categories that are intended to spark conversation. Yeti will also help you relative size by telling you about work items you completed that shared the same estimate size. Finally, based on your responses, Yeti will suggest a size for you to encourage your team to discuss. So why is Yeti Betty asking all these questions? Having a dialogue about the work is key to estimating. These questions pull all team members with varying expertise and concerns into a discussion resulting in everyone having a better understanding of the work. This can lead to teams becoming more consistent in sizing and breaking work down into small sizes that are valuable. Estimating happens in various places within Agile Central. You can access her from QDP or from any page showing the plan estimate column. And the more you engage with her, the more she'll delight you with optional backgrounds and creative questions.
Okie doke. Um, so after Hack Week, uh, what, what does that look like? Um, so uh, number one, we watch all the demos, uh, so like, like you just got to see. Um, we all get together and it's just a big show and tell fest, right? So it's, it's probably my favorite meeting of the quarter. It's just, it's really fun to see what everyone's sunk their passion in for a week. Um, and there's all, obviously all these presentators. Um, and then uh, once everyone's seen all the demos, uh, we all vote on our favorites. So we've done voting a handful of different ways over the years. Um, currently we just kind of do a popular vote. Everyone votes for their, their three favorites. Um, in the past we've um, oscillated back and forth on having categories or not, like you know, best in product feature, best architectural spike, wild card for something that doesn't fit in the category, et cetera. Um, we've also experimented um, in the past with having a panel of experts determine the winners. Um, but we, we've kind of gravitated back towards just having it be popular, but it's, it's fun to, um, to have your peers be the ones that are um, evaluating what, what was awesome. Um, here's just a couple um, screenshots or uh, I guess photos that we have of, of one of our hack demo meetings. Um, and then finally, after that, um, it's time to present the awards, right? So uh, we, um, this aligns with our um, PI or our big room planning ceremony. And um, we do this kind of as a way to unwind and just have some fun and celebrate um, surviving another big room planning. <laughs> um, and so the, uh, what we do here is, you know, we do a little presentation. Um, we get to rewatch all of the winning demos. Um, one of my favorite things about doing this is we often have customers come and visit and experience um, the planning process along with us. And so they get a bunch of really great exposure to this concept and the sorts of things that, um, you know, that come out of our hackathons. Um, and then obviously prizes. Um, we, lately we've been um, giving out trophies, um, some Amazon gift cards, that sort of a thing. Um, definitely everyone that did a project that made a demo gets some swag. Um, the one thing to note with the prizes is it's, the intention here is not to win. Um, so you definitely, like one thing that we've learned over time is not to, you probably don't want to have a million dollar cash prize for your hackathon because um, you're probably not going to get the sorts of projects out of that that you would hope for. But it's really just to, um, you have a little something to, to uh, acknowledge the, the projects that were really cool that everyone thought were really cool. Um, here's a, a couple photos of um, the, the awards presentation that we do during big room planning. Um, so you can see in the background of the one, you know, the, the big screen, we were watching demo videos and there are trophies being presented and whatnot. Um, here's a picture of some past winners of hackathons with their hardware. It's kind of fun. Um, and then uh, after Hack Week, um, you know, uh, you know a, a few weeks out, um, you know, obviously uh, we're all here for in the spirit of continuous improvement, and so it's super important to have a retro, um, you know, just a time to reflect and figure out what was great, you know, what, what can we do better next time, um, and then definitely, um, you know, do it again, right? These will get better over time, um, and they'll be more fun, and, and people will be more engaged. So yeah, de definitely make this a regular thing. And one thing to add to that, I think that as we, as time goes on, we get more participation in these, um, some more creativity, and also that demo video we showed earlier was one of the coolest that I've ever seen. That's, that's what happens when you get video experts helping you with your demo video. So don't, like most of us, especially myself, that's not the caliber of video I make, but it's super cool to see people dedicating time and, and following their passion and actually creating something as cool as that. I did love the Mega Man music, though. So next we'll talk a little bit about shipping hackathons. It turns out that not only is this a great space for innovation, but it also gives us a great uh, opportunity to focus on product improvements and take a look at the proof of concept for these. Uh, with that freedom to kind of explore and work on what we want, it lets us flush out the technical challenges in kind of a quick and dirty way so we can figure out how something would work, maybe one implementation for it. It also helps us understand the future work that is required to ship it. And in these sorts of cases, if somebody's passion is shipping hackathons, they want it to get um, into customers' hands, one recommendation we have is to get product or UX involved, our user experience team, early on. This can help with understanding the customer's needs, understanding how to design it in a way that makes it uh, easy to use, making sure it's designed in a way that's in line with the product roadmap. And then from a product perspective, uh, we want to make sure we consider a couple things before picking projects. It'd be cool if we could ship all the hackathons, but we want to make sure that we are uh, shipping things that solve customer problems, things that are in alignment with our roadmap and not completely tangential to that. 
Um, we also want to make sure we can support things going forward. Probably the, one of the main reasons we don't ship all the hackathons is making sure that we can provide support to our customers and, and update these things as we go forward. Um, the other thing is since this innovation week, this hack week falls right before big room planning, a lot of times we will have an idea of what we're planning for the next quarter, what our commitments will be. So if we decide to ship a hackathon during that quarter, we have about you know a couple days to turn around the amount of work and figure out how much it's going to be and figure out where it falls priority-wise in the quarter. So making sure we understand the work well enough and, and the priorities of it to see if we can ship it. The good news is that here at Agile Central, we've actually shipped quite a few hackathons. The left one on the screen here is user type custom field. It lets you create a uh, custom field with type user, so populated the same way as an owner field. This example here, we created a tester. Um, I think that was one of Kyle's hackathons. And then on the right is yet another one of Kyle's hackathons. He's kind of famous for this. So that's the new app catalog with the community apps in it. It's a, basically a refresh of our app catalog. We've also included a community app catalog, which can be turned on by your subscription administrator. Some of our customers' favorite uh, in-house developed apps. So some great things to check out there. A couple other ones that we've recently shipped. Top left one was one I mentioned earlier. Uh, we call it work item templates allows you to create a template on a whole work item. So you can create a template with multiple fields and on user stories you can create, um, include tasks in that, in that template. That one's currently in closed beta. The bottom left, that's uh, our new risk artifact. So this allows you to track uh, risks in Agile Central just like any other work product, just like user stories and defects. Uh, also currently in closed beta, but going very well so far. And then on the right side is a story to defect converter. So sometimes you create a story that should be a defect instead. This is a quick and easy way to do that conversion. Um, that one is GA got shipped last uh, September, I believe, or October, something like that. And that's just some of what we've done. We've actually have a, quite a few other hackathons that we either are in the process of shipping or have shipped before. Um, the Excel add-in, we have a current version available to customers, which was originally a hackathon, and we're actually working on an update for that, which was another hackathon, which uh, we're hoping to put into beta this quarter. Search and closed projects, you may have seen this early last year. It's your new closed tab in the search uh, window, which lets you see things in closed projects, just like in the recycle bin and active projects. App SDK, which we talked about at our last webcast in December. At mentions, which allow you to mention other people in your discussions. Um, custom fields on all the things, new test case import, time box scope, custom pages. You can see basically here we love hackathons and we love shipping hackathons. We also have a unique thing that we call labs. This gives us a great way to ship these hackathons and give us a place to play around with them so that customers can try them out without shipping them to everybody. So it's essentially within Agile Central there's a place uh, called labs that lets you toggle on specific functionality. We can put things in there and it can be um, turned on per user rather than per subscription and you have complete control over this. So if you decide you want to try something out, you go check it out in there, turn it on. If you don't like it, you can turn it off. There's also feedback buttons which are great. Um, if you go to, sorry, I'm going to walk through this real quick. If you go to your avatar, then go to my settings and then click the labs tab, you'll land on our Agile Central Labs landing page. And then when you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the current labs that we have active. Again, the little toggle there that lets you turn it on or off. And you can also click the feedback button to give us feedback on how to improve, things you really like, um, things that aren't working out so well for you. One of my favorite things that's currently in labs is called window dashboards. This gives us two pieces of functionality. The top right is a, an X button, which will allow you to more easily delete an app from your custom page. And then the one on the left, it, the uh, box with a dash through it, this is uh, a minimize. So let's say you have a shared page which has you know, a bunch of apps on it and you don't want to look at all of them. This allows you to minimize them so you can just have the expanded apps that you're actually interested in. Okay, and then uh, finally, I wanted to talk about some of the, the challenges that we've come across um, over the years doing this and, and some of the ways that we've worked, we've worked through those. Um, so the first one, uh, when do we have Hack Week, right? Um, it can be hard to find a week that works for everyone um, so that everyone can dedicate you know, the time that a hackathon really deserves. Um, so we've, the way that we've um, played around with that is just by trying a bunch of different things and figuring out what's, uh, figuring out what's worked, right? So um, we've played with different cadences and lengths. We've tried it um, every eight weeks. We've tried it for less than a week at a time. Um, we've tried it 
letting individual teams or even just individual people figure out when to fit in hackathon time when that fits um, with their schedules. Um, we've kind of settled on uh, one week a quarter with everybody in the training at the same time being our favorite. Um, there's a handful of reasons for that. Um, we found um, when teams or individuals were just trying to find the time um, to, to fit it in, that violated the dedicated time and space rule of, of leaving room for innovation. So just the people weren't taking the time. Um, and also there's, a, there's something, there's an energy and a, a collaboration vibe that you, that you lose out on if everyone's not building and demoing and everything all in the same cadence. So um, that, that's, that's how we ended up where we are with that. Um, another challenge uh, around unfinished commitment. Um, one of the things that's tough about uh, Hack Week being right at the end of the quarter is what if you have um, committed work for the quarter that's not quite done? Um, there's a couple things that you can do to try and work around this, depending on what the work is and um, what sorts of dates and things you've committed to. Um, one option is to try and just push it out until after planning week. Um, you know, circle back to it and finish it up uh, first thing in the next quarter. Um, we, we also, uh, another thing that we try pretty hard not to do is not um, enabling new functionality or releasing a new feature right at the end of the quarter when we know there's going to be a hackathon on a planning week and just a you know, week where there are lots of other things going on that we won't be able to necessarily you know, have um, the level of rapid response and, and um, r responding to feedback that, that we would like. Um, but again, um, if you do have to interrupt hackathon, like uh, this last quarter we had at least one team that kind of postponed their hackathon to finish some of their quarterly work because they felt like that was the best thing for their team. And that was great, but we definitely suggest, you know, hey, make sure that you make up that time. Do a hackathon. It's super important. Uh, and I think they're going to work, work away um, into their plan this quarter to find that time. Um, another, another thing that we've run into is the fact that planning kind of intrudes on hackathon week. Um, so th this doesn't affect everyone equally, but um, you know, the architects, uh, POs, PMs, UX, those sorts of folks, a lot of time are, are pretty busy getting ready and preparing and you know, figuring out what are the conversations and the work that we need to be talking about at Bigger and Planning that week prior. And so there's not always a, a huge amount of time to actually do hackathon that week. Um, and so you know, again, you know, how can you work around that? Um, the, the first bullet that kind of goes back to that, that innovation slide at, at the beginning, right? You know, let's get some buy-in and make sure that everyone understands that this is a really important week. Um, and let's try and as hard as we can to preserve that time, even for, you know, the architects and the POs, those folks. Um, try, try to schedule all of your pre-planning. Um, if you can, try and pull it forward in the quarter a little bit, right? Let's try and get all of those conversations and some of that work and the, the initial sizing and that sort of thing. Try and do that before hackathon week, right, rather than, using all of the time in the quarter to just finish your work. Um, see if you can pull some of that pre-planning stuff forward a little bit. Um, and again, you know, doing these sorts of things, it, it, it has a big impact on allowing uh, you know, the, some of the folks that are more impacted by this to actually still hack and, and participate with, with teams that are hacking. Um, another challenge, um, I, again, I mentioned earlier that we, we try to cancel all of our normally scheduled meetings for hackathon week. Um, so some of those, like an example um, that we have here, like our daily scrum of scrums, um, those are pretty important, and so it can make it, can make it um, a little bit harder to announce, uh, you know, cross-team issues, um, especially, you know, things related to um, customer issues in production, right? And so, um, you know, we solve that with, with different communication channels, right, email or, or um, Flowdoc is our internal chat tool that we have. Um, you know, set some expectations ahead of time, like, hey, you know, th th this is hackathon week. The train is the train is busy, right? Um, you know, and again, another bullet here about um, you know if you don't absolutely have to release something immediately prior to hackathon week, if it can wait, um, which, you know, being able to wait is is a good thing. Um, this is a good one. This one's near and dear to my heart. Uh, so shipping can be challenging, right? Um, due to how close and hackathon week is is immediately preceding big room planning. That's not a huge amount of time to you, know, you have between Monday and Wednesday, you know, in our current process to figure out, hey, were there any awesome projects that we want to try and fit into the quarterly plan when a bunch of that plan is kind of already laid out? And so um, those can be hard conversations to have. Um, again, you know, as, as Marianne noted earlier, the earlier you can get, you know, support from UX and product and, you know, form a cross-functional team. So a bunch of those, a bunch of that work is known um, earlier. That, that, uh, that helps a bunch. Um, you know, leaving a little bit of dedicated space in your plan every quarter solely for um, doing this sort of work, right, like taking hackathons to production um, definitely helps out a bunch too. 
Um, and uh, this kind of goes back to my comment at the beginning about this being near and dear to my heart. I feel super strongly about this one, and like, we still don't ship as many of these as I would like to. So, hey, we're still trying to figure this out, too. <laughs> all right, so you're probably at this point wanting more hackathons. We all do. There's some great benefits that come along with having hackathons. One thing is attracting and retaining talent. This is that free space essentially planned into every quarter, which allows developers and product owners and scrum masters and everybody else to work on whatever they want. And it's actually, from what we've heard, one of the favorite things about um, our culture and, and one of our, our team's favorite things about working here. So it is a really great way to attract that kind of talent that likes to innovate and likes to work on these projects and also can kind of bring that innovation into the rest of your work. It also gives us a chance to refresh and, and re-energize. Um, by the end of the quarter, especially for you know five iterations, so 10 weeks of, of hard work, we get to a point where we can get a little tired. So this is a way to kind of reduce burnout, go work on something you're passionate about, whether it's learning something new, working on something you wanted to wrap up, or maybe something that you caught while you were working on something else, or maybe just something fun like creating Scotch Corner or writing a song. Um, also helps increase morale. It's a really great team building thing for our whole train. We, we kind of bond over the experience of Hackathon, and, and we make a really big deal out of it, which is important. Um, and also, we, innovation can come from anyone. So this has had an uh, influence on our product vision and roadmap and also the architectural vision and roadmap. The, a lot of the things we shared today were more recent hackathons, but a lot of the older ones we've done have actually kind of changed how we look at the product and, and change things long term. So it can be a great way to deliver value, a great way to, to test things out, and a great way to just let people kind of run with an idea and see where it goes. We actually had one of our developers uh, featured in the Denver Post a couple years ago, I think. Yeah. Um, and basically, uh, a lot of the reason why our people stay here, like I mentioned before, is because of Hackathon. They love the ability to kind of have that freedom, have that space. We also have a pretty cool work environment besides this. This is um, our developer, Garston, working at his desk he, um, but, and eating his breakfast. But it's kind of just one of the cool things about our culture, one of the things people really like, and definitely one of the things people that keeps people working here. You also might be interested in organizing your own hackathon. The great news is that we have a technical services team that helps customers facilitate their own. Um, you can hack with or without Agile Central. Um, if you do decide to extend Agile Central, you can pair with uh, in uh, hands-on training workshops and then follow those up with a hackathon. Or if you don't want to extend Agile Central, we can also help you with planning and organizing and facilitating uh, these sort of hack events give you an idea of what to do and how to do it, kind of bring people into your into your space and help you understand these concepts. Um, it's a funny thing, like we didn't have this at my old company, but this is definitely something that seems super easy now that I'm here and then talking to other people, I know that this can be challenging just to, to get everything going on in the two weeks that it all happens. So if you are interested in this, please contact your account team for more info and they can help set this up. Um, and now, do we have any questions in the chat? Um, let's see, um, if you want to share um, the other slide. So now we're at the end of the presentation. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to use the Q&A feature to the right of your screen, or um, you can also um, press pound six to unmute yourself to ask a question. Um, I'll leave a couple of minutes just for people to um, let any last minute questions come through. Um, but I just wanted to um, promote that Agile Central and CA Agile Academy. There are some great offerings that CA Agile Academy offers, um, like our end-to-end -end class, which is targeted towards new or current users um, just looking to get a little more knowledge about CA Agile Central and how to better use um, Agile Central in their organization. Um, we have a couple of classes in the Boulder, Colorado location in June and also September. Um, as well as a number of great Agile certification classes that we offer. So if you want more information about um, these certification classes, visit agileacademy.ca.com. Um, and I do think that we have a few questions that came through. Um, do you want to address those? Yeah, I, I, this first one I definitely am curious what Kyle's answer is. What is your personal favorite hackathon project that you worked on? Uh, that's a good one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to talk to two of them. Um, <clears throat> my favorite 
my favorite from the demo perspective, just because I think the demo turned out super fun, was for the at mentioned hackathon. I think that was the the one that I had the most fun with. Um, the, I it was. <laughs> It, it was I did, the demo that I did was I can I, we probably can post a link to share it later if that would be interesting. But um, the, the the gist of it was basically you know hey it it can be really hard to um, collaborate in the tool if you always have to be wrangling email and you know, all these other communication channels we have right. Wouldn't it be great if you didn't have to just yell across the room when you wanted to have a conversation with somebody? You can just mention them right in the tool. Um, so yeah, I, I had a lot of fun with that one. Um, as far as personal. Favorite passion product projects? It's probably got to be App SDK. Um, I, I, that was kind of my recurrent hackathon project for the better part of two years. Um, yeah, and for anyone that's not familiar, App SDK is um, it's a it's a component library that allows customers to build custom apps and extend our platform using the same set of components that we use to build the the product itself. Um, and so that's been really fun um, to be able to, it's, it's a great way to interact with the community and, and to help customers be successful um, building their own visualization. So um, yeah, I've had a ton of fun with that one too. Do you have one? Um, I mean, so as a product owner, this, and I've only worked here for just under two years now, I, it's, I have not had as many opportunities to hack, but my favorite one was probably uh, last October, one of the other product owners and I, actually the, one of the creators of Scotch Corner, decided we wanted to create a podcast, um, somehow came up in conversation that he had a great voice for radio, and I don't know what happened. But anyways, we decided to do a podcast on company culture. We only made one episode because it turned out it was super challenging and a lot of work, and we may have uh, tried to um, do more than we were capable of in that amount of time. So, But we decided to start with our uh, tradition here of new guy pie or new gal pie, so anytime somebody new starts at Agile Central, we buy three pies, and they have the opportunity to cut them up and serve them to um, their new coworkers and just introduce themselves. So it's a great way to bond over pie, which is one of our house favorites, and uh, gives people a great way to, to meet each other and talk about pie. Everybody loves pie. Um, this is an interesting one. What is the first step to introduce the concept of hackathons into an org that doesn't currently practice this? I'd say from the things that I've seen, it seems like one of the most important things is having the dedicated space and having the buy-in at all levels, making sure that we understand that like this is a time for innovation and innovation itself is worth the time. So it's not about what can we ship to customers, although that's super fun and, and super valuable and definitely something people are passionate about, but making sure we have the time to learn and try and fail and get to know each other and, and reduce our burnout and things like that. It's something we have to save space for and it's also something that we have to have buy-in from all levels, otherwise we can easily get interruptions or work can fall into it, all the challenges that Kyle talked about earlier. So it seems like the first step is even if it's a day or a half day or something like that, just make sure you have dedicated interrupt-free time where the whole goal is just to learn and try things and innovate and, and do something fun. Maybe that's the first step. Yeah, and I would just add on this isn't exactly the first step, but I think equally important to just jumping in and trying it is jumping in and trying it again, right? They'll, they will get better over time. Um, they will feel more comfortable and people will be more interested in participating, right? So the more you can do to just start trying something, retro on it, and then you know, turn it into an actual part of your culture, um, yeah, the you know the the better it's going to be. Yeah, that's a great question to whoever asked that. Yeah, the other question: uh, What has been a hackathon project that has had the most impact on the Agile Central business? I can tell you the hacker that I think has had the most impact. That would be Kyle, because looking at the list, like so, my team specifically likes to ship hackathons. And uh, Kyle doesn't work on my team, yet I think half of the things we've shipped have been his projects. Um, for the most impactful, the great thing is that Kyle likes to focus on things regarding the app catalog or app development, and that's uh, dashboards and custom pages are the number two most used thing in our product, second to uh, our iteration status page. So I think the fact that somebody cares so much to make improvements like um, the things he's done recently that I know of is adding milestones, scope pages, um, the iteration and release scope pages were a prior hackathon. Community app catalog with the app catalog refresh was a big thing. Um, and then app SDK letting customers do their own. I think subscription app catalog was also a hackathon. 
and just overall improving that experience for customers, it's, it's a big deal to a lot of our customers, and also it's something clearly that keeps getting worked on and keeps getting the attention, and I think our customers love it. Yeah, I guess, uh, I, um, thanks for that. <laughs> um, the, I guess the other one that comes to mind for me is the Excel add-in. This is a weird, um, I would say, you know, like integrations are definitely, you know, obviously a critical part of our business, right, you, integrating with the rest of the ecosystem and just acknowledging that we need to meet people where they're comfortable working, right? And so um, when I, I, I uh, worked with this other guy, Charles, um, four or five years ago, I'm the kind of the first uh, super hacky implementation of the Excel add-in, and um, that ended up turning into a way bigger thing than I think either of us thought. Uh, it might have, it turned out as just kind of a fun, like, hey, I wonder if we can do this sort of a thing. And then, you know, fast forward a couple of years, and, you know, there were deals that were dependent on, hey, can you integrate with Excel? Um, so, yeah, sometimes, you know, the littlest things that, that turn out or that start out as just a, you know, a little idea, you know, just something to play around with end up having a really big impact later. Great, thanks. Um, so I don't think that we have any additional questions coming through, um, but I just wanted to say thank you very much to Kyle and Marianne for taking the time to talk a little bit about more about hackathons and the process that we follow and the benefits that it has on, on our teams. Um, and like Kyle and Marianne said, um, we're, with every ha new hackathon, we're learning new things. So if anyone out there um, has experience with hackathons in their organization and has any learnings that they'd like to share, we would love to hear from you if you want to post on our community. Um, and with that said, um, again, this is recorded, um, and the recording and presentation will be available on the communities within a few days. So you can share with your colleagues who maybe weren't able to join with us live. Um, and we will have um, new webcast topics being um, published on the communities. Um, shortly, so we encourage you to join us for the next few months. Um, but thank you so much, everybody, and we will see you next time.